All right, I believe we are ready for our next presentation. Uh, so Clemens Kynast is going to talk to us about user-centered development of discovery. Yes, that's right, thank you. Uh, and I'm really surprised that we have um, so many talks today and tomorrow about the, this topic. And um, since I always lost track uh, while talking and thinking, I had a little script. So I try to keep on track and don't uh, um, talk too much off topic today. So um, yes, hello and again, and thanks for having me here. Um, today, I want to give a brief overview um, of the further development of our discovery system tool. Suche, Tulp Suche, and give you some insights of the project called Vision or Vision Tulp Suche. What motivated us and um, setting up our Vision Tulp Suche, what is user centered design, and how did we approach it? And at the end, I will give you a short overview of the current status of the project and um, a short summary of our learning so far. So let's get into it. My name is Clemens Künast and I studied computer science at Friedrich Schiller University in Jena. And that's why I came to this building here, the tool. It's an abbreviation for Thuringian University and State Library Jena. And um, I'm working in a relatively small IT team. We are developing various apps and um, services for university tasks and um, statewide duties. For example, long-term archives, as seen on the left side, or uh, university or university publications in the middle, um, digitizations of old books, um, maps, and so on. We are also hosting library management systems uh, based on um, Pika and Koha and um, resource discovery systems for different um, institutions and partners. In 2011, we did our first steps with Viewfind. We built a front door to all our different um, metadata collections uh, I mentioned earlier. It's uh, more than 200 sources. And um, we invest, uh, invented a daily harvesting routine and made them um, accessible through a um, website called the Digital Thuringia. And um, Shortly afterwards, we uh, gradually um, replacing our Pika OPA catalog system. First, we integrated in summon data. And shortly afterwards, in 2014, we integrated um, so our summon index together with the K10 plus central um, collaborations index uh, under the new name suche.tol.un-jena.de. And um, yes, since then we are working with the two column view as well. Um, during this time, um, the organizational structure evolved. Um, a dedicated discovery work group um, was formed, consisting of members from different departments, branch libraries, and uh, scientific fields. This team mainly um, discussed and tested new features and was exceptional helpful, especially in the beginning. And from this, a core team slowly emerged, um, which took care of the main development and daily businesses. So what was the motivation? Establishing new ways for our development. Um, it's September 2021. We have 10 years to suchen now. It's a stable system. Um, it's the most used tool at TOLP. And uh, we have a um, well-organized discovery and development team um, consisting a core team with uh, three persons doing the daily work, service, and development. And there is a cross-departmental discovery work group I mentioned earlier. And uh, we implemented many interesting new features, hosting four different uh, discovery systems for four libraries. And um, yes, that's um, the status quo. And um, we had lots of feedback from colleagues, which um, are gathered in a padlet over the time. And um, 
we had good quantified data from our user from our statistics. Um, meanwhile, a project called Tulp 2025 was established. It's an agenda with the goal to question the actual services, the needs of users, and how to handle digital transformation as a library. Um, it's connected to a relocation of some parts of our university on, and library to another building in the year 2025. And one part of that was a large user survey um, about the library and its services in general. And another uh, was an internal workshop called Zukunftswerkstatt about our user services and some new wishes for Tulpsuche arose at the time, especially the explanation of the provided knowledge, um, what to find where, and uh, about our um, um, about the provided knowledge, uh, what to find where, and um, search areas of our systems and what to find in it. But of course, there were um, recurring problems like relevance ranking and assess problems of e-media. And on top of that, two big new requirements showed up. First, unification of discovery systems in Syringia to gather resources as part of um, near future plans from our Ministry of Economic Science and Digital Society in Thuringia. And the second big point is Folio. We all face here, or do most of us, um, as a new library management system with new interfaces and uh, unknown upcoming changes. And um, so, as you can see, uh, we are faced with many different and an increasing number of demands and new requirements. Um, it's obvious that uh, what uh, are the recurring problems and requests of Tulpsucher are, and the matter discovery is deep rooted in a wide range of tasks in um, uh, Tulp and uh, could not be managed from us alone as a three person team. And for the first time, we paused our daily business and asked what is Tulpsucher for? Who is using Tulpsucher? Um, we want to define clear boundaries, um, what demands should Tulsuche cover and what not. We want direct user involvement, a user survey, use cases, and poking, focusing on usability um, um, overall. Um, what should we implement and what not? So do all features affect all users or just a small group? And do our implemented features um, uh, is needed by everyone. Um, we don't want to small fix fixes. We wanted to highlight problems and fix them thoroughly. Um, who is deciding? What do we want as a library? What should we focus on at first? Um, we wanted clear responsibilities in our teams and so on. Um, we wanted to become more process orientated and not so like uh, in a hierarchy. Hierarchy dependency, you know, I think you know what I mean. <laughs> and um, yeah, what needs to be improved within our teams and the work structure um, in general? Should we expand our small core team? And when yes, how do we do this? Um, we wanted more perspectives and more knowledge in house as well as um, um, outside our library specific small bubble we live in. And um, yes, furthermore, there are many different topics, as you may know as well, like filters, facets, search areas, metadata, accessibility, user and staff support, and so on and so on. And um, we had no idea what to come, but um, we were keen to take the journey and took the um, Tulpsuche to the test. And um, um, we took the impulse from our agenda to 2025 and um, decided, let's go. Um, we stop all features requests now and um, the, um, we, we will talk about tools for what to do next and how to become better and improve and be prepared for the future. And there were two main um, questions we were talking about. Which functions does have Tulpsuche today, and how to improve these to cover our needs we have, and uh, what changes should we include in the development plan? Um, our main goal was focusing on improving the Tulpsuche 
by focusing on their users. And that's not very specific, but um, we are new in this game and we wanted a new view on our system and the landscape around it. So we need to look at the whole ecosystem, digital accessibility to media and information and tool. Meanwhile, it's 2022. And uh, we presented our idea for a vision tool suche to our head office um, directorate, and we are asking for support in-house. We discussed the best way to organize this process and the tools we would need. Um, maybe there's already a go-to plan somewhere or a person with a good idea or someone who likes to help us. Um, this was all the beginning of a new team called Vision Tulpsuche or Vision Tulpsuche. And um, I'm happy to see two of them in here. This is the team. It's um, Svante Dugunke, um, subject librarian history. It's uh, Manuela Heimann, uh, our um, head of the um, work group Discovery and uh, part of the reader services. It's me and Tobias Quote, always here in the audience today, um, our software engineer you find. Yes. Our first step was outlining the scope of tools super through a manifest and thesis. So we try to um, focus on our object objectives, goals, and um, um, our plan. And um, the manifest is divided into a mission statement. So our promise to, uh, to um, our users, tools super as a service. Yeah. And uh, the vision statement, the uh, development of the tool suche, um, which is closely linked to the overall strategy of the library and such. And um, from this manifest, we derived 10 theses. And um, I like to point out number seven and eight, where we state like something like, uh, we want to offer an easy entry for beginners while being integrated integral for advanced users. Okay, it's clear now we want to focus on our users, so user-centered development makes sense. But what is user-centered development? Um, in case you don't know, I just summarized it here. We have four steps, and um, we need the um, first step in uh, analyzing the user process, so identifying problems and understanding misuse misuse of the system. Um, in the second step, we have to define requirements, what needs to be improved. And in the third step, we um, do something like mock-ups or test environments. So it's at the design and proposal stage. And the fourth step is um, evaluate all the things um, we've done before. And um, does the user experience improved or not? In case not, we have to start at the beginning and start over and do it again or um, define the analysis process. And how did we approach it? <clears throat> and which factors can be measured? What target groups are we addressing? So we have lots of differences and need for information, expertise and digital literacy of the users. And um, we can say what's measurable. You all do this um, all day. It's um, the most of this um, parts are in statistics, found in statistics, what do users search for, what do they find, uh, where do they find answers and so on. And um, the most um, difficult part is um, what's not measurable. And um, this is like something like what do users expect from the system and are there features for advanced users and where to put to become an advanced user or not, and where do users search? That's really difficult to identify. And so we started identifying user scenarios and use cases, and we collected like 20, more than 20 use cases so far. Um, we wanted to understand use cases are there for um, understanding usage barriers, and um, we started really early to collect them. And if you like to see them, um, I put links in my um, slides to see um, our collection. It's um, like a user story about getting into trouble with authentication problems or just finding the um, um, edition of a print on page four. <laughs> yes. Um, 
the second big part was a um, user survey we did in June and July this year. Um, we conducted and executed it um, to get more quantified and qualified data for our um, search system. And um, we used the tool Easy Feedback to, to build a survey. It was provided in German and um, English language. Um, it has um, 33 questions and took yeah, about 15 minutes, very, very long from start to finish. But um, at the end, we had about um, 900 participants and uh, more than 850 free text fields filled out. Um, the advertisement was with this posters and like little flyers and social media and uh, a, a big mail out to university members and so on. So it was a really big advertisement for it. So I think it's okay to have 900 participants at the end. And, um, it, and um, yes, we asked the users status, which scientific fields they are in and um, which search tools they use how and how often general questions about Tulsuche, but also specific scopes like search areas, contents, literate, literature management, user account, just to name a few. And if you like to see a detailed um, result chart, there's the link as well. Um, our last question was, may we invite you to the library for a discussion at a later date? to find, find out more about your experience or expectation for a modern search tool. And there were 82 people interested in a follow-up workshop. So that's really great because more quali qualified data to come. We are just conducting everything and um, the detailed um, 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 analysis is um, still in progress, but the key findings so far are um, um, the problems are more about sorting, ranking, relevance. This was often unclear. Um, they wanted more online tutorials and how-tos and um, like um, more grouped related media like uh, print or online versions or grouping editions overall like um, we will try to um, figure out with match key algorithms and such. They wanted an advanced search and uh, location and subject and topic facets and such. And um, as a little thank you, <laughs> we uh, used the uh, opportunity with you find 10 and did an update and um, brought um, some of the requested um, wishes um, in there in August or September. It was yeah, very good advanced search we never had an advanced search so far so we put it in um, we sorted a little bit our um, faqs and how tos we had so far and um, uh, integrated a new topic facet based on the um, basis classification B bkl yes so we could thank the users for their participation with a nice update and give them the feeling they're a part of the process that's that was the main reason doing this. Um, three years later, um, what did we achieve so far? Um, we had three years full of learning and thinking, of course, but um, it was a lot of work, especially the user survey. It took us uh, many brain cells and time. And um, our on my manifest and thesis gives us uh, really clear boundaries for us and sovereignty in our. Um, 200 persons uh, counting um, library and um, we have strong organizational teams uh, with clear tasks and regular meetings. Um, the discoveries team has become a collaborative project involving various departments and staff. Internal networking and cooperation are very important and now we are working much better. Tulsuka is no longer seen as a static system um, and the acceptance and future wishes, wishes are still rising. Overall, we have become more visible to our users, especially through the survey, also by integrating the service desk into our discovery system and automatically um, transferring metadata into, into forms. Um, requests now go where they belong to. So 
um, many problems and questions now reach us directly and not from A to B over C and so on. And um, the, yes, and we will become even more visible in person with our workshops to come. Um, we started change to higher this transparency towards the public now. We provide a change log and open re release plan and we give you regular updates on the progress of division in our blog, websites, and social media. So as a conclusion, all in all, we had the right feeling about the, the actual needs and problems. But now, as we know, the user's demands, we are more likely able to estimate a suitable solution. And um, first, we will finish the analysis of our user survey and plan the workshops with the interested users as follow-up and get more qualified data. And then we are able to create mockups from different parts and topics of Tootsuche and establish feedback circles to optimize the new features, constantly prioritizing all the new wishes to come. And um, yes, we think our system is capable of integrating all these wishes um, and the user's needs. And um, yes, um, um, and you all here in this community, um, help develop our discovery system further to make it more versatile and stable and uh, usable. And um, we we'll find is we we'll find is the right tool for us. And um, I hope this overview was interesting for you. And um, so let please let me know um, which of you has undergone a similar transformation process in the library, except um, we saw at StudyCut so far and um, who likes to um, get in contact with us and share knowledge and uh, ideas about this. We like to get in contact. Thank you.